Well, it's amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once, I once was lost. Oh, but now I'm found. Well, I was blind. Oh, but now I see. Come on, sing it again, folks. Oh, it's amazing, amazing grace. How sweet the sound I had saved. A wretch just like me. I once, I once was lost. Oh, but now I'm blind. I was blind. Oh, but now I see. The word of the Lord says, I will extol thee, my King, my God, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day I will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise him to another, and they shall declare thy mighty act. I will speak of the glorious honor and majesty of thy, thy wonders and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the mighty, terrible acts. And I will declare thy greatness. And they abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness. And I will sing of thy righteousness. Are you glad to be here today? Hallelujah. Both this morning and this evening, we're going to be singing of the greatness of God. And I want you to join me right now as we open this service in prayer, as we welcome all of our families out there on the internet that's watching, literally watching around the world. It's always exciting to me to say that I know that in Africa that there are 200 congregations. Now it's already evening there. But 200 congregations, they went out and they bought big screens and put them in all of their in five different nations in Africa brother Paul uh, uh, Karanja and uh, I want all of you to know that when we have church here there's more folks in church with us than just what comes inside this cathedral building so let's let's pray and the Lord bless them from coast to coast and all the continents around the world Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this grand day. Thank you for your power. Thank you, Lord, for your wonders. And we love you, God. This is a great time to be together. Now, Lord Jesus, I believe you that you're going to be exalted. You're going to be praised. We're going to shout your glory. We're going to thank you, God. And we're going to magnify your name. And we're going to, Lord, embrace your word that you've exalted above your name. Dear Lord, I pray for all of those that are a part of the service, that they will be refreshed, that they'll be inspired, and great joy will be found in the presence of where they ever they are. And everybody said in Jesus' name, everybody shouted amen. amen. Praise God. You may be seated. It is my distinct pleasure to bring to you the singing Will Banks, and these folks have loved God and They've been with us before, several, 20 some years ago, but uh, I'm mighty glad that they're back today. Let's worship Lord, Brother Terry Wilbanks and his family. How many ways have you touched my life? Freely you pour your blessings on me. How many times have you made a way 
All the while I fail to see It is in you I live and move Anything I possess Is because of your kindness All that I am All I have I owe to you So I've got to say Thank you for another day Thank you for one more chance to say Lord, I thank you Try to tell of your words In my life I don't know where to begin I can't recall one day, one step Without seeing your hand in it Because of your love Your spotless blood has redeemed Now I'm free to God be the glory I offer thanks by surrendering all to you Again I've got to say thank you for it This morning, if you got up and are moving around and had a little breakfast, if you're a breakfast person and you made it to church, you got a lot to be thankful for. Let's not wait for just the big things, let's thank Him for the small things every day, many times a day. I'm thankful, and we're thankful to be here in Huntington at Apostolic Cathedral. Get my, get my, get, get my tongue in shape here. It's great to have some good friends all the way from Pikeville. Is it Kentucky or West Virginia? I get confused over here. Your border is crazy, as you know. <laughs> Thank you for coming. And they, they had a drive to get here this morning, and we're honored that they would do that. And I'm so thankful for the cross. Without the cross, there'd be no reason for this building to be here or for us to be here. We'd still be sacrificing lambs. I'm so glad that ended at Calvary. And because he died, this song says, I live. Oh, 
for the debt I could not pay For my wrong to be made right Demanding perfect sacrifice Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ So my Savior became sin Exchanging glory for gruesome death For the joy set before him The war was won with his final breath Grave, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Righteousness is his He was marked, I am to blame From the fall of Adam to this day Who would love to death but he Are you thankful for the cross of Calvary? That blood that he shed on Calvary. Without it, you and I would have no hope. It did everything for us. It heals our body. It saves our soul. It washes away all the sin. It covers up all that dirty, nasty stuff in our life. This song, it just says this that glorious cross. If I should glory in one thing, let it be the cross of Calvary. Where the Son of God was lifted high For the sins of man he was crucified It was there that rugged 
frame The silhouette of cold disdain Both nail and pawn were driven deep Oh, the cross where Jesus died for me thankful for the cross of Jesus why don't you lift your hands and your voice all over this house tell him for yourself Lord I thank you I thank you for that redempting flow hallelujah hallelujah I'm so thankful for the price that he paid for the sacrifice that he made and what it means for us still today he did it once for all so that we have the hope and the promise of his power living within us. And in the book of Acts, it says, unto you, to your children, and to all that are afar off. So it's still absolutely for us today, though there's a lot of, a lot of ideas and opinions floating around out there. You know, we've all become experts on every subject. If you get on social media for five minutes, we're all experts on health, on politics, you name it. And it's even crept into the church. Well, I see it this way and you see it that way and it's just opinion. I always want to speak the truth in love, but when it comes to what's in the word of God, it's not about my opinion and it's not about your opinion. It's about what the word of God says and what worked 2,000 years ago on the day of Pentecost. It still worked in my grandfather's generation. And in 2022, it hasn't lost its power. The word of God hasn't changed. Except a man be born of water and of spirit. He cannot see the kingdom of heaven. That's not my words. That's, that's what's in the book. It's what he said. Do you believe the word of God is forever? Look at somebody and tell them if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Down 
take just a few moments here. Uh, would you hand me that white sheet of paper back there behind you? Yes, sir. That's our prayer list. And uh, we've got some praying that we need to do and some announcements we need to make here real quick. How are you enjoying this? Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's right. Would you stand with me? We've got some folks in the hospital, Sister Linda Boster, Brother Jim Neff, John Oat. Our beloved Brother Richard Cremeens is back in Kabul, and it's a very bleak situation. Then we've got these several names that's involved with cancer. Just remember all the cancer patients, our lovely people that's in the nursing home. And I'm going to tell you that Sister Shirley Wilt is going to start visiting every nursing home and visiting every one of these names on here. And uh, we just thank God for the burden that God's placed on her heart and, and those that she's taking with her. Uh, we have a Lindsley uh, DeLauder, very sick, several special prayer requests, and uh, we're praying for them today. Uh, uh, we want to especially mention... Uh, Sister Diane Boster, brother, Sister Brenda Cremeens, Brother Greg Robbins. There's others names that have been on here for a while. Loeb and Bruce Wright, they need our prayer for sure. And then uh, the long list of the people that we're requesting prayer for to be filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. In fact, how many of you have a loved one that you wish was here this morning? How many of you have got a loved one you'd like to see them walk in the doors and rush to these altars. I'm telling you, it's my belief. It's my belief that there is such a stir in the spiritual atmosphere that our product, the children, our prodigal children, I feel like they're coming home. In fact, I've been praying, oh, give up, oh, North. 
Oh, give up, oh, south. Oh, give up, oh, east. Oh, give up, oh, west. Let our children come home. Amen. Amen. We're praying that prayer. If our elders would come forward right now, God bless our elders as they come. Brother Allen, sure. Brother Allen Ross has gone through a little ordeal, but the Lord's really helped him. Praise God. Praise God. You need prayer for your body. You come forward while we're praying. These elders will anoint you with prayer. If you need a prayer cloth, we have them here for you to take. So come forward and we'll pray for you. Let's pray together. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear God, we open ourselves up to you to say we believe. We believe in your power in the name of Jesus Christ. We believe that your name is above every name. We believe, Lord, at your name that every demon has to flee and that every sickness has to lay down and leave. We believe, Lord Jesus, that you're a healer of mind, spirit, and soul. Dear Lord, we bring you these today. We come against cancer, diabetes. Dear Lord, mental health problems. We come against them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, the versions that this world has given, the chaos that is in our society. Dear Lord, we pray that you will forever put your angels around about your saints and protect them and help them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, we ask you right now, believing your great helping hand is upon us. Touch these bodies. We've anointed them with oil. We're praying the prayer of faith. You're making them well and whole. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, this is the day, Lord, that you've made. We're going to rejoice in it, and we believe for the demonstration of your power right here, right now, in the Holy Ghost. Dear Lord, for those that are out there around the world that's watching, I want you folks out there to just take a moment, focus on the screen of your device, and I want you to hear me as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke every sickness and every disease. I pray, Lord, for prosperity. I pray, Lord, for renewal. And I pray, God, for that backslider that's watching out there tonight. Oh, this morning, that they'll wake up, God. Maybe they'll make their couch or the steering wheel of their car. Or perhaps it's going to be in their office or dining room or bedroom. Dear God, make it an altar. Let them come home to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you for helping us. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I received a most startling statement today from Sister McChristian. I'll try to keep it short. I'm going to pray another prayer for your protection. Everybody say, I'm going to pray for my protection. Her brother Danny, Friday, went into tutors, one of the tutors in Charleston. What he did not know was just a few customers before him a man had come into the restaurant that had a large amount of fentanyl in a bag in his pocket and he had fentanyl powder on his hand and when he counted his money out and gave it to the clerk she of course put it in the register he went on his way they do have his picture uh, because of surveillance cameras but several customers after that ended up laying on the floor because as she counted change back to them, she passed them back contaminated money. And the fentanyl went into their body and they collapsed in the floor. 911 was called. They didn't know what was going on. Some four or five people they had to Narcan. Danny was one of those victims because after they examined further, even the straw that he had been handed, the covering of it had fentanyl on it, and it poisoned him. So in this world that we're living in, we don't know what's out there, but we've got to depend on the Holy Ghost and the blood of Jesus to cover us and protect us. When the scripture said, if they drink anything that's poison, it shall not harm them, 
They were talking about accidentally doing it. And that's what we're talking about right now. If they were to take up a serpent, remember one fastened on the hand of the Apostle Paul. He shook it off in the fire. I just want you to hear me right now. There is a protecting power in the Holy Let's pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, for all of these wonderful saints of God that's here, we pray for your loving protection and your helping hand. In the name of Jesus, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're going to bring these folks back to sing. You may be seated. We're getting ready to receive our Sunday morning offering. They'll be singing while the offering's being received. Remember, we do have some mighty fine guests here. Any of you ever go to a gospel concert? How much money did you pay to get in? How much? Somebody said a lot. Well, these folks are going to be with us all day long. I would hope that you're able to give this morning. If not, give extra tonight. But these folks, let me tell you why I appreciate these folks so much. They are one God, Jesus' name people. And what they were 20 years ago, they're the same today. In fact, uh, uh, the sister that's singing this morning, the daughter, she went to school and Heather knew her from IBC. And it's just a, and, and what, they, what they were, they are. And I thank God for that. Aren't you glad for people that won't sell out? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Now I've got a couple announcements to make before we receive the offering. Number one, you do know that we're going to get ready for Pentecost Sunday with four services. Would you put that on the screen, the four services that we're going to be having? And that's good. I'm going to teach on a Wednesday night on the prophecies found in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And then our, our beloved brother David Bounds is coming back to preach the next night on repentance. The next night our brother Warren Finney is coming and he's going to be preaching on water baptism in Jesus' name. Our brother Christ is coming on Saturday night for a Holy Ghost rally. Here's the surprise for all of you ladies and I'm tickled to death that all the men's going to enjoy it. Would you pick the next slide up? On Pentecost Sunday, Sister Jennifer Williams is coming. Now, I got to tell you how this happened. I felt in the Holy Ghost the first time I saw her that it was the will of God. So I got in touch with her. And I said, you've got to be with, can you be with us on Pentecost Sunday? She said, no, I'm scheduled in Austin, Texas. All right, well and good. We'll do it at a later date. Thursday morning, my phone rang. Brother Harper, this is Jennifer Williams. I'm in the POA sanctuary in Alexandria. This is my three-hour prayer shift I have every day. She said, I just heard a voice. And the voice said, I want you in Huntington, West Virginia on Pentecost Sunday. I'm telling you, something is about to happen. Something's about to happen. Praise God. Let's get ready to receive our offering. Lord, bless the gift and the giver. Multiply it to your needs. And we thank you, God, for the power of the Holy Ghost we feel. In Jesus' name, have your way now. Amen. God bless you. Give while these folks sing. Are you looking forward to seeing Jesus? Come and go with me to a land of endless joy and perfect peace where there will be no sad goodbyes. Every tear will die, the land will dry. Heaven is waiting, there's a Savior drawing. Don't you hear him calling out your name? The Spirit and the Bride say, Come.
How about you?
Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Praise God. This is absolutely marvelous. While Brother Kuntzman is coming, I want to take just a moment here, and I want to say that um, uh, we're glad that Robbie and Sherry Taylor are here all the way from Pikeville, Kentucky. Sister Barrett's 80th birthday. Happy birthday. Sister Gwen's good to see you back. And Mike Smith, uh, Mike Christian, we're glad that you're here and also glad that Mike Smith is here today. Let's give him a hand. God bless Brother Kuntzman. Praise the Lord, everyone. Lord. Would you stand with me this morning in the presence of the Lord? What a great time of praise and worship. Amen? Amen. And singing to the Lord. I enjoyed those songs. Praise the Lord. Look at someone and say, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad the Holy Ghost is here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I have an announcement, and I don't know where it's at. Sister Star, I left, mislaid it somewhere. There's a dinner next week, next Sunday, hot dog dinner. It's a fundraiser, and uh, please be aware of that next Sunday to support who we support. Mother's Memorial. I'm sorry I got that all messed up, but next Sunday, Mother's Memorial, <laughs> please come and support that. We want to be supportive of that. It does, yes, ma'am. All right, so $7 for hot dogs, chips, cupcake, and a drink. And if you're, uh, she said elderly, I didn't say that. If you're elderly, you get a discount, praise God. We're AARP around here now. <laughs> Turn in your Bibles. Matthew chapter 7, verse 28 and 29. Just raise your hands right now and worship the Lord. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, God, for your presence right now. Thank you, Lord, for your people that are here today and our visitors, our guests, God. We ask you to have your way, Lord, in the next few moments as you already have this morning. Speak peace and life into these lives in Jesus' name. And somebody said in Jesus' name, it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. And for a few moments this morning, I'm going to speak on this, when Jesus speaks. Turn to somebody and say, I want to hear from Jesus. Praise God. Shake somebody's hand before you see it and tell them how great they look this morning. You could do that the whole time, Will Banks, I wouldn't mind. I'm just peace be still peace be still he told them he said we are going to cross over to the other side so he got into the boat and he slept how many knows that Jesus was just as much God as he was man and so he had to sleep he was weary I don't know about you, but the Bible lets us know that Peter told us that he healed all that were oppressed of the devil, which means that that had to have been taxing on that body. He had to have been weary at times and worn, and so he had to sleep. He had to get that rest. I don't know about you, but in ministry and also just in daily living and working, I get busy working, and there's a time I've got to take a nap sometimes because I worked so hard. Jesus needed his rest. He was sleeping. The storm rose. And nobody knew what to do because they became fearful. They forgot that he said, we're going over to the other side. They woke up the master saying, do you care that we perish, Jesus? And he simply stood up in the bow of the boat and said, peace, be still. Why are ye so Fearful, he asked them, because immediately the storm stopped. 
the waves settled down and there was peace on that sea. And he said, why are you so fearful? And they feared and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I don't know what storm there is in your life this morning, but I've come to declare a simple word to you, the same words that Jesus spoke when he said, peace, be still. Peace, be still. There is a storm without today that is brewing against the people of God and the church of God. It wants to destroy everything that's holy, everything that's righteous, everything that's godly. And we are fighting that battle on a daily basis. We feel the barbs. We feel the sting of the arrows. We know that the enemy is doing his best to destroy us because he knows he has but a short time and I've come to tell you today peace be still don't worry about what's going on around you place your trust in the hands of Jesus Christ he is the one that can speak peace into your life if you will allow him there's a storm outside of us it is daily barraging us and hitting us and trying to destroy us we have become like it was a punching bag for the enemy, but we have a God who is greater than any arrow the enemy might have. There is no punch he can give you that will knock you down and keep you there. You can trust in Jesus this morning. And then there is a storm that is within. Because immediately in the next chapter, Jesus in that boat gets to the other side. And as he's stepping out of the boat, immediately a man approaches him with an unclean spirit. This man is tormented. This man is haunted on the inside. The Bible says that he came out there and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. Neither could any man tame him. Could always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him. Somebody needs to come today and run and worship Jesus. Somebody needs to get dissatisfied with just sitting in a pew and allowing the presence of God to go over you and make your way to an old fashioned altar and simply begin to worship Jesus because there's a storm inside of you. It's not just a storm that's on the outside, but there's a storm brewing in your spirit. There are things you've been facing, struggling with, and fighting for years even that God wants to deliver you from today if you'll simply run to an old altar and pray. You got to rebuild them altars sometimes. We have let altars lay in waste and we are here today to rebuild altars so that God can come and restore peace into our life if you will just let him. When he saw Jesus afar off, it wasn't that he, he was looking for something, don't you know? He had been looking for a long, long time and when he saw Jesus, he came. And Jesus simply said, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And that spirit that was called legion, because there were many spirits inside of that man, was cast out of him and cast in the, sh in the swine that were nearby. And they went toppling over, over that cliff into the sea that Jesus had just calmed. And the Bible lets us know that there were people there that did marvel at what Jesus did. When Jesus speaks. He speaks peace into your life. You may not have peace this morning, but you can leave when the peace speaker speaks into your life. They walk for miles to hear Him, to catch a glimpse of Him, to be healed by Him. His first miracle at the wedding in Cana where he turned the water into wine. It had spread like wildfire from Galilee all throughout Judea and Jerusalem. And people had heard about him. His fame was great. They began to talk about this miracle worker, this 
healer, this one who could turn water into wine, who could, who could, who could also heal the sick and raise the dead. They begin to ask the question, sometimes in hushed tones and sometimes in large arguments and conversations, saying, is this Jesus of Nazareth? Is he the Messiah? Even John the Baptist had a question one day. He said, art thou he that should come? Or should we look for another? And John simply said, tell, or Jesus said, tell John what things you have seen and heard and how the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised. To the poor, the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. I've come to tell you today that if you're sick, you can leave healed. If you're depressed, you can leave with joy in your spirit. If you're going through a problem where you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, God can give you peace in the midst of your struggle in order to get over what's going on with you. Somebody in this room today needs to hear the voice of the man of God that's saying, Peace, be still. Peace, be still. He healed people of their infirmities. He healed them of their plagues. He healed them of evil spirits. There are evil spirits that attach themselves sometimes to us trying to get us down. There are spirits sometimes that come along trying to get you to believe things that are not true. We uh, surround ourselves daily with negative news and information that gets in us. They call it misinformation. It's just a lie, by the way. Misinformation is the same word as a lie. And they, we hear all that junk and we let it in our spirit. We don't know who to believe or what to believe. There's one thing you can believe today. It is the Word of God. It stands true and firm and it will never be false. Can't put my trust in men, but I can put my trust in the Word of God. I want to trust some people sometimes, but you can't trust everybody all the time, but you can always trust the Word of God. He said, I word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. I've got to hide that Word. And there's peace that comes with that Word because there's knowledge that comes. And if you don't know what's going on in your life, you're confused by what's going on, you don't know what the answers are, Get yourself into a corner somewhere and read the Bible. If you don't like to read, get a Bible app and listen to the Bible, but get it in your spirit because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And if you need your faith restored and strengthened and you need peace in your life, get into God's Word where you will find peace. Peace of God that passes understanding. Your situation may be such that you don't know why or how you're going to get through it, but there is a peace that comes from God that goes beyond your understanding. We've got to stop relying just on our human intellect and our human will and our human talents and trust in the Word of God and trust in the power of God that brings us to salvation. There is something about the Holy Ghost. If you will yield yourself to the Holy Ghost, let the Holy Ghost lead you. Even though you may not know what tomorrow's bringing, you know that God is there already working it out for you. Your tomorrows are already in God's hands if you'll place them there and leave them there and let Him be the peace that you need, not just this morning, but every day. Every day. Peter told Cornelius, his household, he said that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Ghost, and with power went about doing good and healing all that were pest of the devil, for God was with him. And Jesus even forgave sins. I don't know what you've done. I don't care what you've done. What I know is that his, new, his mercies are renewed every morning because he has such great love for you. Look at somebody and says, don't you know Jesus loves you? Don't you know Jesus loves you? Uh, he died for you at Calvary. So that you can have peace in your life. So that you can be at one with Him. And He is not going to give up on you so easily as you might give up 
on yourself because he is the God of peace. He is the God of completion and wholeness and he wants to make you whole and keep you whole. And if you've traveled so far from God and you think he'll never take you back, that is a lie straight from the pit of hell. God will bring you back unto himself. He will wrap you with his loving arms. He'll put a robe about you. Peace on your feet and a ring identifying you as his child, his son, his daughter and having his authority. You have authority this morning that if you would just believe in it, there would be peace in your life in a measure you've never experienced before. He forgave sins. This Jesus Christ, this God-man, Emmanuel, God with us. Don't you know he's with you in the storm that is without don't you know that he's with you with the storm that's within? We used to sing a song when I was a child that said, Sonny, somewhere in the shadows you'll find Jesus and you'll know him by the nail prints in his hand. And we sang another song too that said when he was there all the time waiting patiently in line. He is not disappeared from you. He is not resisting you. He is not fleeing from you. He is there waiting on you to run to him like that poor unclean spirit. And that man pushed him and pushed him till he saw Jesus and ran and fell at the feet of Jesus. Somebody needs to run to Jesus today and find the peace that God and only God can give. They were astonished at his doctrine. They were astonished at the things that he said. They were confused because they had never heard a man speak like this man spoke and do what this man did. Even John said, he said, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written concerning all the things that Jesus had done. And look at what he's doing today. He's still saving people. He's still healing people. He's still delivering people. He's still lifting up people from their fall. All you've got to do is decide once and for all, I'm going to run to Jesus. I'm not going to lean on my own understanding, but in all my ways, I'm going to acknowledge him and he will direct my path. He has a path for you. He has a place for you. He has a purpose for you. But you've got to decide within your heart that I want to give it all to Jesus. I need that peace. I need that purpose. I need what He has for me. Allow His peace to come in you. Peace. Peace. Wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. Peace. Peace is here right now. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is peace. There is liberty. There is freedom. But there is peace. You can have peace even when your world is crashing around you. You can have peace even when your loved one has died and you don't know what to do and you're grasping at straws just to survive, you can have peace. You can have peace even when your future looks unstable and you just don't know what to do anymore because everything you put your hope in, everything you put your confidence in, everything you put your trust in is gone. And yet God comes in and He swoops in with His peace. It's like... It's like a bird. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Peace. Jesus has all power in here this morning to meet your need. He wants to heal you. He wants to restore you. He wants to supply for you. He wants to forgive you your sins. Even that darkest stain upon your soul, the thing that plagues your conscience and keeps you awake at night and keeps you from being able to walk in the freedom that God has for you. Jesus said very clearly, He said very clearly to the woman caught in the very act of adultery after He rode upon the ground and after He said he who was without sin cast the first stones and all them Pharisees began walking away. And he said, lady, where are your accusers? And she said, there's none here. 
Jesus and the man who could have been her accuser, the only one who was perfect, said, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. This is the God of peace. It's the God of comfort. The God of mercy. And He's here today for somebody to simply run to Him with arms open wide. And that word worship means they fell at His feet. He fell at His feet and worshipped Him. He's here right now for somebody to receive His worship. Oh, what a great God. Would you raise your hands right now? I love you, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. What a great God we serve. The peace. So he said to them, greater works than these shall you do. Greater works than what he did. When you have peace, when you're complete in Jesus, you can do greater things than you've ever imagined. But when you're racked in the middle of a battle and don't know what to do, your attention is displaced. It is distracted. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to distract you from your purpose. Your purpose is not to walk around always beat up and worrying about, do I need to repent again today? Your purpose is to live in freedom and in peace and in liberty and in the authority that God has delegated to you to reach a lost and dying world. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any daily thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. These are the things that you can do because you're a believer this morning. But because we're distracted, because we have storms without and storms within, we fall short of what God has promised us that we are able to to do. So, oh, I want you to stand with me this morning. We're short, yes. Look at your neighbor and say, do you have that peace this morning? Do you have that peace this morning? Just close your eyes right now. And reflect, Lord, I need you. I need you, God, to be my peace in the midst of a storm. Oh, God, you are able to do anything in this house today. You see the lives here that are tormented by storms without and storms within. And I'm asking you, God, right now to begin the work that you've already started. Bring that completeness in their life. That wholeness, God, that peace in Jesus' name. Would somebody come today to the altar and pray? And fall on your knees or lift your hands in submission and humility unto Him. Right now, as they begin to sing, praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Here's one. Is there another this morning? Someone to be honest and say, I need peace this morning. Hallelujah. Sweep over my spirit. Anybody else forever? Hallelujah. I pray. I need you to. Where are we going to go? You're the only one that has the words to eternal life. Hallelujah. Oh, I need you. Anybody else when it comes? You don't have to stand there in your stoicism this morning. Everybody is welcome to come.